so we need to stand like right about here um so we're we're all in there and then it's got really a pretty good mic you know but, uh, so it should pick us up yeah so my name's jeff so. rob rob yeah okay <laughs> and Brittany. rob and Brittany. so my my lead question that i give everybody is we're all gonna die it's a universal question we're all gonna die someday what do you think happens next and then the more specific part which i find very interesting is whatever you believe or doubt about life after death how did you arrive to that and, and oftentimes we're in process so you know it's not like it's right. your but uh so yeah so what do you, you guys what's your initial take on that i mean honestly with me i just think we kind of go into the earth and just get reborn and, okay yeah just because yeah um yeah that's the only thing i can really think of now, when you say go into the earth like and reborn, do you think like in a physical sense or a spiritual sense? Like in you a feel spiritual like sense, and like I mean, there's people that are cremated and they get, I mean, they end up into the atmosphere and they, I mean, their soul and everything has to go somewhere. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, yeah, I kind of think that it's possibly possible that a guy that goes back into like the fountain of the world I guess okay um, I, I believe I believe a little bit more in reincarnation uh -huh. um, I'm a little bit more of like a naturist and I think that things go I think that life is cyclical uh -huh. so I think that to me that seems to be how Kind of like the Lion King circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking like um, the, uh, the the movie that I'm trying to think of is uh, uh, Avatar. No. Where we're all part of this greater whole, yeah. I guess. So it sounds like both of you kind of are together on what you believe, right? But you were saying the in reincarnation? Yeah. Um, I was actually, I was raised Catholic, uh -huh. and so we see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and so for a large part of my life, you know, it was that, you know, you're born, and then after you pass away, you go to heaven, um, and then, or you don't. <laughs> or, or, or hell or purgatory. Or right. Or, or, um, yeah. But uh, it was, I, just based on like my education and other like like what I've learned from other religions and just life in general mm -hmm. um, like I said I kind of have a little bit more of like a nature based like thinking to things when like you say science when you say there's a there, there is a word naturalist right right and the word naturalist is basically saying there's nothing that's supernatural you know? See, and I, do, I actually, I do kind of believe in some supernatural things, uh -huh. like... That can't be measured with science, I Exactly, say. yes. Um, and that's the thing that I think is kind of like, knowing that um, there are things that you, you know, it's kind of basically knowing that you know, you know enough that you know you can never know everything. Okay. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? I've like, I've written about that recently. I, I think uh, to the mark of an educated person is to know how much you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. So so even you know, a combination of you know both. what we all know. Yeah. You, nobody can ever know everything. Right. <laughs> And not, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, for like me, I was raised Catholic, and then I went to a Catholic grade school until eighth grade, mm -hmm. and it was just like getting one side of it, and then in high school, I went, and same thing where I went to different, I looked at different religions and everything. Public high school then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just kind of hit that point where I was like, you know, can't quite know. And then it's also like, like if everyone goes to one place or another and then 
there's just so many different religions that are like, oh, you can go to this place, you can go to that place. Yeah. And then it's like... It can't all be right. Yeah. And then it's like you just see everything in the world and it's like, oh, maybe everyone just kind of gets funneled back into the life force of the art. Yeah. So. Would you... How... Like... Would you say that you've come up with your own beliefs or they're based on something that's already established? Uh, you know? Yeah, I mean, because, like, I still believe a little bit in the reincarnation uh -huh. just because, like, they're, like, some of the older pictures that they show of, like, some people and they look like people that are alive today. And it's like, it's a little... Weird. Okay, so you see some connections. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, that's very quietly possible. Yeah. Interesting. Reincarnation would be awesome. Yeah. And get another shot at life. It kind of makes sense because we kind of like make a lot of mistakes and blow it in yeah. this life. So uh, why not have another chance to get it right? <laughs> is that kind of like... So would you say your belief in reincarnation is based more on, say, evidence and education or preference? Like... Like you're saying, it sounds like a good idea, yeah. right? What do you think? I would say it's based a little bit more on just, like I said, like educating yourself and also just life experiences. Uh -huh. um, I just personally feel, you know, like as far as like the science-based aspect of it goes, like you know, the energy is transferred. Mm -hmm. So like as far as your soul goes, don't feel like it's exactly linear. Mm -hmm. I think that it's essentially like recycled. Okay. And I don't know if exactly if that means that like your consciousness moves on to right. another, you know. That's the big question. And, but and if, if we do move on and we don't, our conscious, like we're not conscious, like would you say that you're aware of a, a former life? I do, like, some people say that they make, like, with, through, like, meditation and, um, you know, that you can make yourself aware of former lives. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably possible, but it would be, it, like, the average person wouldn't experience that. I, yeah, and I'd say it probably doesn't take the time to try. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like there, like for me anyways, there have been times where I'll be doing something and I'll just have like that deja vu moment and I'm yeah. like, I feel like I've done this before. Right. And then it's kind of like, maybe I was doing this before somehow and, and it's something that I know I've never done before. Yeah. So. Although I've, I've felt that myself and, uh, yeah, so, so you're saying it would be like a memory of, yeah. but you're, but you're, would you say it's because you're doing something that you you had done before in another life? Right? Yeah, because I mean, like, like a lot of people oh, talk about deja vu and stuff like that. It's like there has to be some sort of grounds for that to actually be a thing where you kind of remember doing something yeah. you've never done before. Yeah, it's like maybe it's your past life trying to wake you up. Or something. Right. Yeah, I've definitely felt that. Um, I guess I've. My conclusion is I dream about so many different things. What are the odds that I'm not going to experience something that's very close to what I've already dreamed and yeah. I kind of remember from a dream. But um, Would you say that you believe in a creator or a god or higher power of any sort? Or? I do. Yeah, I mean, it, I do. And it's not like before I used to believe in it just because... It was kind of that thing where it's, it would be crazy not to think of something like that. Because mm -hmm. then it's like, if if there was no creator or anything, like, and it was just a freak accident that we're all here. All right. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Because then it's like, uh, <laughs> okay. And as far as different religions or different denominations of Christianity goes, um, I think that everybody kind of has their you know, specific identity that they want to give towards a creator. I think that there's probably, as far as the reality of it, it it's probably a little bit different from 
the specifics that everybody has in mind. Mm -hmm. But um, if you kind of look at, like I said, every different religion or different denomination of Christianity, they all kind of have the same message or goal or... Um, would you say that applies to not just Christianity, but to all religions in general? Or? Generally. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So generally the message of most religions is to live a good life and basically to help out others and it's just essentially be a good person. Yeah, yeah. And we all share a kind of a common moral set of standards. I mean, the people will argue about them and disagree about them, but in general we have a a sense of right and wrong. As a, as a so as a Christian, my I get that I get that from the Bible. It's a, like you're familiar with Adam and Eve and the whole idea that when they they were given one rule, follow this one rule, right? Don't eat from this one tree. And they then they break that rule, and then the Bible says their eyes were open and they knew good from evil. And so I would say that everybody has in common this idea that there is right and wrong. Like we're given a, at that point, the human race was given a conscience. A moral conscience or a moral maybe a better word for it is like a moral compass because we always know there's a there's there's a way north you know no matter where we are and so in whatever behavior we're in even though it might look different in different cultures we all have this sense of there is there is a morality that goes beyond us like in other words I didn't make up the rules even though I might want to break them you know, yeah. or argue against them. It's kind of like there's this referee that you know yeah. I disagree with, <laughs> or I'm trying to trying to talk into uh, seeing things my way, <laughs> but it doesn't work too often. Yeah. So, but that's one way of looking at it. Is that you know why is it that all the religions have similarities? And it's and it's because we all share a, the Bible would say a God-given sense of moral conscience. Mm -hmm. You know. So, do you, when you think of God, do you think of um, a personal being or an impersonal force, kind of like an avatar? I think that the Tree of Life might be a, yeah. or, or Star Wars, you know, the force yeah. be with you. Yeah. Well, I like, guess I, I generally think of it as being a little bit less specific. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my mom's religious and I always joke with her about, like, I, I'm not 100% sure it might be a person looking, a humanoid looking thing. Right. It might be a giant space worm. Who knows? Right. Like, it'll be, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where you kind of, like, like everyone's going to have a different image in their head yeah. of what God's going to be. Yeah. And, like, for me, I'm just like, it's probably going to be, like, a giant tree of life or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes the most sense to you. Yeah. And one that, so not personal, it's one that just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, you take the personality out of it, and then and then are we really accountable to it? Right. I mean, you know? Kind of like electricity. Yeah. Um, I believe electricity is more powerful than us. Right? I mean, that's a force that can kill us, right? But there are rules that it has to follow, and when we learn those rules, we can control electricity and use it for our purposes. And so, if you think about God in the same way, it kind of breaks down. So I would say I believe in a personal God that does have make decisions that I can't control, because if I could control God by understanding the rules, it, it would almost reduce God to like a genie in a bottle where like if I rub that bottle, God, you have to do what I say, you know, or or uh, this force has to obey us, like electricity kind of has to obey us when we True. manipulate physical laws yeah. things like that. Because like, well, for me anyways, it's like thinking of it as something impersonal, it feels more like then it's not like somebody trying to control me it's like i know right from wrong i know how to do the right things and instead of it feeling like it's going to be somebody that's like doing the wrong thing and like looking down at you and being like like a police yeah police, a, a cop yeah. traffic cop in the sky or something yeah yeah <laughs>
And then like just with the tree, because like then it feels like it kind of encompasses everything. Because then it's like with the roots and everything, it'll like if it is watching, then like there's a lot of trees and stuff around, so maybe that's how it watches. Right? Yeah. yeah. Through all the yeah. I'm sorry, I feel like I cut you off. You're gonna say a little <laughs> bit more about it. <laughs> He's got like a big brother type. <laughs> <laughs> the trees are. They might be. Yeah. Yeah. This tree might be listening to us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a spot. <laughs> um. Are these? Is this something that is this like something you guys talk with each other a lot about, or think a lot about, or have read bit. books or pursued much? Yeah. Or? I mean, like. For me, like one of the first religions uh, after Christianity I was looking into was Buddhism. Mm -hmm. And one kind of religion that I fell more into uh, later on was uh, Vikingism, with like Odinism and all that, which like the Tree of Life was okay. one of their big things in there. But, um, but yeah, after that it was just. I mean, I still, it's just like I have the knowledge of being raised Catholic and then like looking at all the other religions, getting information about all of the other ones, mm -hmm. and then like seeing everything you talked about in all these other religions. I mean, it's interesting when we talk about it randomly. It's like, I mean, it's, it's interesting, especially like, uh, like with us, we we have different sides of it and she's more like smarter about it and I'm just like <laughs> it might be trees it might be this and that. you seem more whimsical I guess yeah <laughs> just like <laughs> and when you say smarter about it like more well read would you say and, well like looked into it more that and then she's better with words okay so <laughs> one, yeah. One thing I want to, you know, like so as a Christian, I mean, we, you know, we read the Bible, and my my information about God comes from the Bible rather than kind of like what do I want God to be like? You right. know, the Bible actually presents that as like idol worship. Like we're we're actually creating a God that we're more comfortable with. It might not be like a statue, like the idols of the Old Testament, but. It's, it's creating, a, you know, like picking and choosing from all the different buffet tables of religion and picking those ideas which we like the most and forming our own mental ideas about God that, you know, that we like, you know? And uh, and so actually the Bible says, don't do that. That's, that's idol, idol, idolatry, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Um, and so, so what the Bible does is it, it presents God, um, actually, no, God presents himself through the Bible, if, which is, I have a new phone and I, I, it's like opposite of my other phone, so to turn an alarm off, I gotta do the opposite movement. Um, so, so, uh, so, so for, just to give you an example, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of different movements wanting to uh, kind of change our image of God, so it's like, why can't God be a woman? Like why can't God be female, or, or uh, I guess what, what would you, what's the word for both androgynous, right? Well, Jesus said when you pray, say Our Father in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't have a choice, you know. This is how Jesus presents God. It's it's you know God is presented as you know refer to God as male. There are references to God like like uh, in the Old Testament like hiding us under the shadow of his wings, you know, like a like a mother hen right. would do or yeah. something. So it's not that he's all male, you know, like all male tendencies, but Jesus says, refer to your heavenly father. And if Jesus had said, refer to your heavenly mother, as a Christian, I would have to say, okay, I'm going to pray to my heavenly mother, you know? So, so the authority for, like, who does God present himself as comes from the Bible, not from my preference, you know? And uh, to be honest, I mean, as I've... I became a Christian in my late teens, and through the years reading the Bible, um, I've come across things that it's like, okay, if I was going to make up a religion about God, I would not say this, or I would not do that, you know? 
Did you guys, you guys have much experience with the Bible, reading it? Yeah, I mean, like, for me in grade school, it was, I mean, we had, um, I think it was uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we went to church, and read the Bible. Did the confirmation class? Yeah. Okay. So a Twice a week. Catechism, yeah. confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I, had, I was Lutheran, I had the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but only once a week. <laughs> but, yeah. They were. They wanted a, everyone to like, because I think it was uh, third grade, fourth grade. I think we skipped fifth grade, and then it was sixth to seventh. Okay. It was Tuesdays and Thursdays, church, and yeah. Bible studies. Okay. So. Yeah, the Bible, like you said, the Bible was taught as being correctly the word of God. Um, yeah. I personally feel like because it was it was written by multiple people and then it was basically written, you know, a lot of it was written like after Jesus was crucified mm -hmm. and then um, as it's been like, translated through the years, I feel like things have probably gotten lost in trans translation and there are kind of Things probably aren't quite as specific as what they were originally mm -hmm. meant to be. Um, I think that it, to me, it's a little bit less literal, but I think that within the stories, there are lessons to be learned. Yeah. So, um, like, I feel like I personally don't take it, like, super specifically, but yeah. like I said, I still feel like there's something to be learned there, um, and that it, you know, it matters, but it's not. Maybe it's not exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I, um, I really like. I go to a church that like we really take the Bible seriously, or try to. You know, it's not easy to follow, but um, to say it's God's word does not, and I do say that, right, and we say that at our church, but we don't necessarily mean take it all literally because there's different genres, like you were saying, there's different books in the Bible and uh, different authors, and I do believe God inspired those authors, and, I, and, I, and, and so to say I believe it's God's word, another way of looking at it is to say I believe everything that's written in the Bible is what God wanted there. Now that doesn't mean God wanted it there for me to say okay this applies to me and it says go out and you know wipe out this nation like he told the you know the Israelites to do back in the day um, okay well that doesn't apply to me you know so I'm not gonna take that literally but he wants me to know that or for example and this is an example of kind of like a Bible story that like we look at it differently when we're little and now we look at it as adults the, the whole flood story right nice story of God saving this family and, and these animals you know they they look cute getting on the on the ark and then we grow up to be adults and we realize wait a minute there's a lot of dead bodies floating around outside that ark like this is a god of you know like he killed a whole lot of people and a whole lot of animals you know that would be an example of something that's like do I really want to believe that you know <laughs> but then again what's the point of it it's, it's that sin is God really hates sin and really doesn't want people to um, be killing each other and treating each other this way, you know, and, 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 and is a God that, that can get angry and can, you know, act on that anger and yet can, can leave room for, you know, a way of escape for some people that are willing to follow him, things like that. Just, so do I take it literally? I think it's possible. The whole flood story, I think it's possible to be a Christian and not take it literally. But there are, like you say, um, teachable points, I think, in there that I think God would want us to pay attention to, you know? So, so it's a different way of like looking at the Bible. Like, like God wants it, wants us to, you know, like, to learn from it, but it doesn't have to be taken literally. And, uh, but I don't want to wear out my welcome. I appreciate you guys' time. I'd, I'd love to 
kind of challenge you to maybe revisit the Bible as, a, as an adult? I don't know if you've read it much as adults. We, we, we get presented with it as children's stories and then maybe for confirmation and then we put it aside and we have these memories of it and selective memory, I think, or you know, like whatever struck us at that time. And then the only other opinion that I find most people have of the Bible is the maybe either you know like good or the negative opinions of others. So it's like most people don't read it for themselves; they go by hearsay and they go yeah. by the opinions of others. And uh, so I would say it's you know it's definitely a book that's influenced a lot of people and worth our time to revisit it as adults and maybe even revisit it as um, as if what if this is. What if there is a God who's trying to communicate his purpose for our existence and uh, that we have a purpose and that he made us for a reason and um, that he has a plan for our lives and, uh, you know, has something to tell us, something to communicate to us rather than us inventing who he is, you know, him, God revealing himself to us. So is that a good, uh, good thing to give you for food for thought? <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I um. Yeah. I don't want to wear out my welcome. I'll, I'll give you the information. You know about uh, where I go to church and you know uh, where you can see this, the YouTube channel. So, the thing about uh, is the Bible reliable? I'm actually a high school history teacher. That's mm -hmm. where I go to church, and then my YouTube channel is right there on the other side. So, but um. I really do trust, like the more I read the Bible, the more I'm amazed at how these 66 different books fit together and, and have a coherent, like a, what's the word for it, like a narrative that, you know, a, a narrative of God, our relationship with God being broken way back with Adam and Eve, and then, and then God kind of pursuing us and winning us back and showing maybe all the different ways that don't work and then finally dying on the cross to, to take, you know, the punishment for our sins. So God being a good God would be a God who loves justice. There must be a punishment for sin and yet is willing to take that for us. And so just this whole narrative of the Bible works together really well. The other thing is um, I've come to believe, like I've looked at how the Bible has been transmitted because I think maybe you're thinking of like the telephone game. You know, where like it changes as the message gets transmitted through the generations. We're really only one um, language away from the original uh, texts. You know, like in most most uh, major languages of the earth, they're they're translating the Bible from the original text to that language. So, do I trust every word of the Bible? I trust it as much as I. I, I would trust someone translating one language over, you know. So maybe not everything hangs on one word because it might be translated a little different. But when I read whole chapters and I get whole whole ideas and I see how they all fit together, I uh, I do feel like it's something I can count on, rely on, um, and just the way that uh, it's very consistent. I don't know if you ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Have you heard of those? I mean, that's, that's kind of a test. What's, what's so significant about them is we can compare some of those original texts of the Bible with what we have today. And they found them to be amazingly, like 99 point whatever percent accurate, you know? Um, so it's like, I've come to the conclusion that if the Bible is miraculously inspired, like God, want, God inspired people to write what he wanted them to write, then why wouldn't he also miraculously transfer that through the centuries? You know, I mean, if he has, if he, if he has a, a message to communicate to us, like, I think any god that can create this huge universe would have the power to to do that. You know, <laughs> so but it takes faith. You know, so yeah. So that's my information, and uh, I think I have. I'm going to give you a, a book that you know, might be interesting. This um, this book is. Uh, written by a guy who asks a lot of times the same question, what do you think happens after his life? And a lot of people have um, very similar questions, you know, like where'd the Bible come from or 
And so he answers some of the most basic questions in here. It's based on a much thicker book. This is kind of a condensed version, but you guys, that's the only copy I have left right in here. So you can have that one. Thank you. All right. So it's uh, Brittany and Rob. Yeah. So um, it'll take me a few days to get that on that YouTube channel, but you can see how other people have answered these questions. So. All right. Yeah. <laughs> different thing. It seems like people don't talk enough about. Yeah, and that's that's the point of recording this. Yeah. Um, I actually uh, showed some people at church one of these, you know, recordings uh, just last week, and I think they were kind of amazed. Like, yeah, you don't have to be like this fire and brimstone preacher standing on the corner. Like, you can actually have conversations with people. And, I think it's good for everybody to reach out beyond their, you know, comfort zone and their normal communities. And, yeah. Um, and I've been very challenged as I've met people of different beliefs and you know, uh, lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I would love to talk more. And you yeah. can learn something from everyone. Yes. Whether you agree with them. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Now, I, I try to stay away from politics, but religion, I'm finding is, yes, and, and even politics, I think I would talk about, but I don't want to go there. <laughs> so, all right, you too. God bless you. All right, thank right. you. Take care. Thank you.